Good evening and welcome to another midweek meditation. I'm Christy Gammon and I'm so glad to be here with you this evening. Thank you for meeting with me and allowing me to create the space for the Holy Spirit to just fall fresh on each of us and give us some revelation or some encouragement for the days ahead. Tonight we continue in the Easter season, and my meditation is called Be One in Christ. So as you take a moment to just settle into your space, um, I did want to say up front that I am just recording this meditation. This is not one that I'm also doing live. So instead of in the moment taking extra time to actually do the two minutes of deep breathing and extra time for processing and journaling during the meditative session. Um, I'm just going to do a brief pause, enabling you to pause on your end for as long as you like. So just a heads up that you want to be mindful of that. I'm just going to keep rolling for the purposes of the recording today. And you have that open invitation to pause whenever wherever you need for as long as you like. <clears throat> Some things that you might want to gather would be a beverage, cheers, your Bible, journal, and pen, and an essential oil. I'm going to highlight marjoram for this evening. This is the oil of connection. And in the essential emotions book, it talks about the positive properties instilled through the essential oil marjoram. It helps with being emotionally open and connected, developing close relationships, having a soft heart, uh, being loving and able to trust. So I know marjoram is probably not one of those oils that you just grab on the daily to use. So maybe this is a little bit new. Maybe it's in your kitchen and you're used to using it in some savory recipes. But tonight, I think it would be the perfect oil to enhance this prayer practice. So let me open us in prayer. Then we'll begin our deep breathing with marjoram or any essential oil that you have on hand that you like. Um, and then we can flow right into the deep breathing from the prayer. Holy Spirit, we just invite your presence and your peace this evening. Just fall fresh in our spaces and rest on us. Hmm. I already felt my shoulders drop. Maybe you felt the same thing. Lord, just reveal to us where in our bodies, our minds, and our spirits, we might be tangled up in this world. Help us to release those tangles and just welcome you in, Lord, with healing, with extra measures of grace and mercy. <clears throat> with a blessing of deep rest for when we exit this session and a gift of strength to take into tomorrow, Lord. We thank you for your work on the cross, which makes us one with you. We look forward to exploring that and everything that that might mean to us in depth this evening. <clears throat> Amen. Go ahead and grab your essential oil if you like. If you're using marjoram, I would take a smell of it first and decide if you want to put it into your palms. Um, I'll leave that up to you. This is not one that I would rub all over myself or put in my hair like I sometimes do for a natural diffuser. I'm just going to smell this one out of the bottle and let it minister to me and bring to me what it needs aromatically. I bless you to do the same. Go ahead and take your two minutes. <clears throat> mm. 
Now we'll continue tonight's practice with our scripture, which is Colossians 3, verses 1 through 11 in the Passion Translation. Christ's resurrection is your resurrection too. This is why we are to yearn for all that is above, for that's where Christ sits, enthroned at the place of all power, honor, and authority. Yes, feast on all the treasures of the heavenly realm and fill your thoughts with heavenly realities and not with the distractions of the natural realm. Your crucifixion with Christ has served the tie to this life. Sorry, your crucifixion with Christ has severed the tie to this life and now your true life is hidden away in God, in Christ. And as Christ himself is seen for who he really is, who you really are will also be revealed for you are now one with him in his glory. Live as one who has died to every form of sexual sin and impurity. Live as one who has died to the desires for forbidden things, including the desire for wealth which is the essence of idol worship. When you live in these vices, you ignite the anger of God against these acts of disobedience. That's how you once behaved, characterized by your evil deeds. But now it's time to eliminate them from your lives once and for all. Anger, fits of rage, all forms of hatred, cursing, filthy speech, and lying. Lay aside your old Adam self or Eve self with its masquerade and disguise. For you have acquired new creation life, which is continually being renewed into the likeness of the one who created you, giving you the full revelation of God. In this new creation life, your nationality makes no difference nor your ethnicity, education, nor economic status. They matter nothing. For it is Christ that means everything as he lives in every one of us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we'll sit with several questions as we meditate on the word. Let's start by sitting with Christ's resurrection as being yours too. What does this mean to you? Ask God to speak to your heart and show you something specific. Now let's feast on the treasures of the heavenly realm. Fill your thoughts with heavenly realities. I invite you to let your imagination take you to heaven. Let it fill you with the sights, sounds, smells, tastes, and treasures of our true home. Are you experiencing distractions in the natural realm? Don't sit in judgment or shame, but let the Holy Spirit bring them into your awareness and just observe what they are. Come Holy Spirit. Are there desires or vices serving as idols in your life? Apply the same process that we used as we meditated on our distractions. Don't sit in judgment or shame, but let the Holy Spirit just bring them into your awareness. 
Come Holy Spirit. <clears throat> And finally, let's rest on the truth that you have required, you have acquired new creation life and access to the full revelation of God. Envision yourself in deep connection with Jesus, stepping into new life in him, <clears throat> growing more and more into Christ likeness. What does this look like? and feel like for you. Thank you, Lord. And as always, let me leave you with a few invitations for your week ahead. I always mention the recording since this meditation was originally recorded. Maybe, maybe you've already been stopping and really soaking in each of those questions, but the invitation still stands to come back and watch this again so that you can take any of those questions or dialogue that you're having with Jesus deeper and deeper. <clears throat> the next invitation is to hold thoughts captive. We talked about um, feasting on the treasures of the heavenly realm and filling our thoughts with heavenly realities. Sometimes worldly realities will creep in and we have negative thoughts that we're walking around with, just like playing on a soundtrack inside our heads. So maybe some thoughts have been revealed that would be good to swap out for these new heavenly thoughts that you've just experienced. I always, uh, recommend holding that one negative thought, maybe writing it down on a piece of paper, and then using a couple of positive thoughts to offset it. Once you've decided on your positive thoughts, um, just practice saying those over and over. They might be anchored in scripture or affirmations or a declaration you want to speak over your life. Speak life over yourself, um, you may then want to divide that paper in half, separating the negative from the positive. So once you're focusing in on the positive, you can tear that paper in two, do whatever you want to just uh, create a physical reminder that you're crossing out that negative thought. So you might wanna exit out on the paper, rip the paper in two, take the negative half and rip it up or crumble it into a ball, light it on fire, whatever you want to do with it. Uh, the choice is yours, but just to create a physical memory of saying no to the negative thought and to ushering in those positive thoughts that are going to serve you and fuel you <clears throat> with life. And then my final invitation is to create what I call an I would rather list. So maybe during the meditation, you had some distractions, desires, or vices come up that you're now aware of that you would like to work on. I recommend really working on one of them at a time. And once you've been able to move that out of your life and you feel like you don't have to remind yourself all the time, you don't catch yourself um, stepping back into that old way. So brainstorm some things that you would rather do instead of that distraction or that desire or that vice. And wherever you might engage with that thing, put your list. So maybe it's a food that you don't want to eat. So it's on your pantry cabinet or it's on your refrigerator door. Maybe it's um, taking the cell phone into the bedroom at night and just mindlessly scrolling when you know you should be getting a good night's sleep. 
or reading that book you've been really wanting to read. Um, maybe it's the television or something that goes on in the living room, maybe a gaming system, just put your list there. So when you go to do that activity, you're confronted with your list and you're going to use the list to remind yourself of goals that you've set, things that you really want to do that you feel like you never have time to do. And maybe you're just falling into those distractions, desires, and vices versus doing the things that you would really, truly rather be doing. So use your I would rather list, post it strategically in your home to help you step away from those false idols. <clears throat> and now before I release you into your glorious evening ritual, let me pray us out. Dear Jesus, what a humbling revelation it is to consider your resurrection mine too. Lord, let this wash over me in waves of love, forgiveness, healing, gratitude, invitations to grow into Christ likeness, to lay down any distractions, desires, and vices of this world serving as idols in my life. To be empowered to always keep my eyes and my ears on heaven as I dwell in this life in the shadow of your cross. I love you, Lord. Amen. Good night and God bless you all. <laughs>